Hello there, citizens of the Reject Nation. Greg here today. I'm going to do a movie reaction for the film Inside Out. First things first, please go ahead, leave a like. Doesn't take too much effort on your end, but it sure helps us out a lot. So thank you for doing that. That's very appreciated. Secondly, yeah, I'm a little bit familiar with Inside Out. I've heard thematically what it deals with. It's always sounded very interesting to me. And here's the truth. I, I explained this in a, in a trailer reaction not long ago, but I'll, I'll do a quick like 10 second recap of it. And I'm going to watch what I'm going to say just because YouTube's hypersensitive here. I rented this probably in like 2015 and I fell asleep about like 10 minutes in. Don't remember those 10 minutes, not because the movie was boring, but because I ate a special dessert that uh, 2015 Greg was taking quite a bit of at the time and I uh, knocked out really fast. So yeah, never ended up watching the movie and I had to return the film the next day. I've heard of this movie throughout the years. I've constantly nodded my head in conversation. People are like, it's kind of like Inside Out. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in my head, I'm like, from what I know of Inside Out. But guys, I'm here to do it properly this time. I'm ready to focus and absorb this film. Also, uh, full-length reaction watch-alongs where you sync up with your own copy of Inside Out. I'm watching this on Disney+. Plus. Available for Super Sexy Rejects at our Patreon page. I want to say once again, thank you to all who have joined our Patreon. Thank you to all who support us there because you guys have been astronomically beneficial for us and at times just a, a massive savior in our lives. So thank you. Anywho, let's finally watch this. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Aren't you a little bundle of joy? Aren't you a little bundle of joy? Memories. It was amazing. Just Riley and me forever. <laughs> oh, for 33 seconds. <laughs> I'm sadness. Oh, hello. I, I'm joy. Can I just... If you could, I just want to fix that. <laughs> Thanks. And that was just the beginning. <laughs> oh, there's so many, so many emotions. Okay, looks like you got this. Very good. Oh, that's right, Karen. Oh, look out! That's oh. fear. He's really good at keeping Riley safe. See, easy, huh? Hi, back. Oh, we're good. We're good. Ooh, Thank you. Thank job. you very much. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> this is disgust. She basically keeps Riley from being poisoned, physically and socially. That is not brightly colored or shaped like a dinosaur. Hole. It's broccoli! <laughs> yes! Riley, if you don't eat your dinner, you're not going to get any dessert. Wait, did he just say we couldn't have dessert? That's anger. <laughs> no dessert? Oh, sure. We'll eat our dinner right after you eat this. Ah! Tears are coming, yep. Well, she... There's no place for her to go, so she's good. We're good. It's all great. Aw, joy can't exist without sadness. To really understand joy. But the really important ones are over here. I don't want to get too technical, but these are called core memories. Yes. Uh, like when she first scored a goal. Oh, that was so amazing. Damn, how psychologically deep is this going to get? And each core memory powers a different aspect of Riley's personality. Like Hockey Island. Goofball Island is my personal favorite. Come back here, you little monkey. Aw. We love our girl. Oh, she's got great friends and a great house. Things couldn't be better. After all, Riley's 11 now. What could happen? What? <gasps> Traumatic memories. We're getting close. I can feel it. There it is. Here's our new house. And... Oh, it'll get better. We're supposed to live here? We have I'm telling you, it smells like something died in here. Can you die from moving? Guys, you're overreacting. <laughs> Nobody is dying. A dead mouse! Ah! Oh, no. All through the drive, Dad talked about how cool our new room is. Ooh. Let's go check it out. It's gonna be great. Yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, guess what? The moving van won't be here until Thursday. You're kidding. God. Is She's closing in. Hey. Oh no, you're She's not. Coming behind you. Watch out. Watch out. 
<laughs> I wonder what the actual plot of the movie is. Or is it just an exploration of Riley's mind? The investor's supposed to show up on Thursday, not today. Uh, I gotta go. It's okay. We get it. See you, sweetie. Dad just left us. Oh, he doesn't love us anymore. That's sad. <laughs> You know what I've realized? Riley hasn't had lunch. Remember? Hey, I saw a pizza place down the street. Maybe we could try that. Pizza sounds delicious. Pizza? Pizza. Yes. Pizza. pizza is always a joyful emotion. What the heck is so that? Much, with disgusting broccoli. I like that time with the dinosaur. That was pretty funny. <laughs> What happened? She did something to the memory. What did you do? Sadness. Thinking of her dad making her sad. Wait, what? What happened? Uh, uh, a core memory! Oh no. oh, no. She's not finding the joy and the things she once found joy in anymore. She's growing up. Why are you crying? It's, it's just like really the opposite of what we're going for here. Crying helps me slow down and obsess over the weight of life's problems. Uh, you know, crying can actually be very emotionally beneficial for you. Long-term memory data selection via channel subgrouping. See? Fun already! Oh, you lucky dog. You're reading these cool things. I gotta go work. Life is so unfair. <sighs> uh, Joy just keeps pushing away the sadness. Hi, honey. The mom bad news train is pulling in. Still not moving, Dan. <laughs> Now they're saying it won't be here till Tuesday. Can you believe it? Toot, toot, toot. Where's dad? On the phone. This new venture is keeping him pretty busy. Oh, no. She's feeling neglected. Uh, I guess all I really want to say is thank you. Huh? You know, through all this confusion. You well, you've stayed our happy girl. Your dad's under a lot of pressure. But if you and I can keep smiling, it would be a big help. We can do that for him. But... Would that deny Riley her own emotions? I have a feeling this movie's going to break me. <laughs> this is surprisingly mature. Looks like we're going into REM. I've got dream duty, so I'll take care of I sending these to long term. Great day today, guys. I wish Joy would get to work on my dreams. Well, this is it. A new place. <laughs> God. Somebody order a broccoli pizza? Oh, gross. I know I'm not supposed to do this, but... We are not going to end the day like this. No. Joy, you're... <laughs> you're going to bad. It's all wrong, Joy. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. What are you doing? And there. Perfect. This is the circle of sadness. Your job is to make sure that all the sadness stays inside of it. Oh, no. Did you just building a wall around the sadness? <laughs> just make sure that all the sadness stays in the circle. <laughs> Okay, everybody. We have a new student in class today. Are you kidding me? Out of the gate? <laughs> the anxiety. My name is Riley Anderson. I'm from Minnesota, and now I live here. How about Minnesota? Can you tell us something about it? Well, you certainly get a lot more snow than we do. <laughs> <laughs> She's so <hilarious. laughs> Pretty much everyone in my family skates. <laughs> It's kind of a family tradition. We go out on the lake almost every weekend. Oh, it's turning sad again. Hey, what Wait, gives? What? Hey, sadness, you touched a memory? We talked about this. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. We used to play tag and stuff. Oh, no, Riley. Somebody help me. Grab that tag. Wait, 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 wait. But everything's different now since we moved. Oh, Riley. This is so sad. It's a core memory. But it's blue. Oh, God. Stop it! No! Ah, no! That's a core Stop memory! It. Stop it! Let's Wait! Go. Uh, uh, core memories! <gasps> Whoa, what's happening?
Thank you, Riley. I know it can be tough moving to a new place. Oh no, she's shutting off her emotions? Riley has no core memories, no personality islands, and no, <gasps> you're not in headquarters. Without you, Riley can't be happy. We gotta get you back up there. Oh, it must, must hurt Riley to feel right now. This <laughs> movie's a fascinating, empathetic experience right here. <laughs> I found a junior hockey league right here in San Francisco. Uh, but, 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 this, uh, here, you, you pretend to be Joy. Wouldn't it be great to be back out on the ice? Oh, yeah. That sounds fantastic. Yikes. The tone. Did you guys pick up on that? Uh -huh. Sure. Mm -hmm. did. What should we do? We're going to find out what's happening, but we'll need support. Signal the husband. <clears throat> oh, that's clever. <laughs> <laughs> That's really clever. <laughs> uh oh, she's looking at us. Uh, what did she say? What? Oh, oh, sorry, sir. No one was listening. <laughs> Signal him again. Ah, so Riley, how was school? Oh, oh, you gotta be kidding me! For this, we gave up that Brazilian helicopter pilot. <laughs> school was great. All right. Riley, is everything okay? Tone. Riley, I do not like this new attitude. Oh, I'll show you attitude. Oh, no, 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 no. Stay happy. Oh, what no. What's your problem? Just leave me alone. Sir, reporting high levels of sass. Take it to DEFCON 2. You heard that, gentlemen? DEFCON 2. Yay. I don't know where this disrespectful attitude came from. You want a piece of this, Pops? Come and get it. Yeah, well, well. Here it comes. Prepare the foot. Ready to launch on your command, sir. That is not the Fire. Word. That's it. Go to your room. Now. Uh. Foot is down. The foot is down. Yeah. Woo. Good job, gentlemen. That could have been a disaster. <laughs> well, that was a disaster. <laughs> Come, fly with me, Gachinha. <sighs> Escape into those memories. Things got a little out of hand downstairs. You want to talk about it? Come on. Where's my happy girl? <laughs> oh, he's trying to start up goofball. <laughs> this is so clever. All her dominating emotions are there. This is so fascinating. I am like so fascinated by this. <laughs> oh, goofball island. That means she can lose friendship and hockey and honesty and family. You can fix this, right, Joy? I, I uh. You have to try. Oh, we'll never make no, it. No, 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 don't obsess over. <laughs> uh, da, da, uh, uh, don't, don't touch, remember? If you touch them, they stay sad. Oh, sorry, I, I won't. Starting now. Oh, yikes. What happened with the playoffs? We won the first game. Coach says we might actually go to the finals this year. Oh, and we've got this new girl on the team. She's so cool. Uh, she did not just say <gasps> that. A new girl? Meg has a new friend already? Replace no need for Riley. <laughs> the Cody's favorite is radius. Let's I gotta go. What? I gotta go. Go, Wait, okay. go, help Did you just please tell friend, me friend, which friend. way is... Oh, no! Friendship Island! No. Love that one. And now it's gone. Goodbye, friendship. Hello, loneliness. <laughs> Bing bong! Riley's imaginary friend! I'm Joy. The Joy? Mm -hmm. Oh, what the heck you doing out here? Oh, without you, Riley won't ever be happy. We can't have that. We gotta get you back. Uh, I'll tell you what, follow me. Oh, thank you. What a great imaginary friend you are. We're taking the train of thought. The station is right through here. After you. We shouldn't go in there. Bing Bong says it's the quickest way to headquarters. No, but Joy, this is abstract thought. What's wrong with that? I'm not missing that train. Bing Bong knows what he's doing. He's part dolphin. They're very smart. Well, I guess. This can be dangerous, yes. I like how illustrative like the animation is, yet there's something that's they keep it simple, but not too bombastic. It's, it's the right balance to strike for because this could have easily been just like gonzo madness if they wanted it to be. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it on for a minute and burn out the gunk. Oh. Hey, would you look at that? Whoa, whoa. What's happening? Oh, no, they 
turned it on. Ah, never seen this before. Oh God. Okay, never mind. I guess the thing I was saying, they might do what they're doing. <laughs> Abstracting. There are four stages. This is the first. Non-objective fragmentation. Oh God. <laughs> the train. <laughs> Whoa. We can't fit. Oh no, we're not figurative. Oh. Wait, we're, we're two dimensional. Fall on your face. Oh. Sadness, you figured it out. There's another station. That way. The train always stops there. Welcome to Imagination Land. Oh, cool. Trophy town, medals, ribbons, everyone's a winner. All the dreams. And there's always something new like... Who the heck is that? Imaginary boyfriend. I would die for Riley. Oh, God. <laughs> Luck isn't going to help us now. If she tries to use Hockey Island, it's going down. Which is why I've recalled every hockey memory I can think of. One of these has got to work in place of the core memory. She's about to play. Hurry. <laughs> Way to go, fear. She's rejecting it all. Box, box. Riley can't be done with me. No, that's so sad. It's gone. Forever. Sadness. Don't make him feel worse. Sorry. It's no. all we had left of Riley. He, he can confide in sadness. We were best friends. <laughs> yeah. It's sad. <laughs> uh, there's a comfort to be had in sadness when you allow yourself to just feel it. This is, this is a touching movie. Oh, what is it? Uh, oh, nothing. Just the best idea ever. What? All the good core memories were made in Minnesota. Ergo, we go back to Minnesota. Oh, no! Let's sleep on it. Because, hey, I'm sure jolly, fun-filled times are just around the corner. Oh, man, she becomes super depressed. Hey, hey, why aren't we moving? Riley's gone to sleep. We're all on break. You mean we're stuck here until morning? Yeah, the train of thought doesn't run while she's asleep. It's really not. She wakes up sometimes when she has a scary dream we could scare her. Scare her? No, 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 she's been through enough already. But we're gonna make her so happy she'll wake up with exhilaration. <laughs> That's never happened before. <gasps> <laughs> I mean, this is pretty scary. Mark, 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 this isn't working. Oh. Bing, bong, bing, bong. Sadness, you are ruining this dream. You're scaring her. But look, it's working. Oh. Damn, Sadness, you've been pulling this off. You might know Riley better than Joy. Ow, careful. Oh, oh, so sweet. You can't do this. I know people in headquarters. Bing bong. What is this place? The subconscious. The subconscious, yeah. Hey, you! Oh, you caught us. <laughs> Get back in there. No escaping. No escaping. What is going? Candy wrappers. <gasps> it's a trail. Bing bong. Oh, she's afraid of clowns, huh? God, it's so loud. <laughs> we still have to wake up Riley. But how? Scare her with jingles. <laughs> Follow us! <laughs> Nothing like a good scare to wake you up! This one's my hand. <laughs> This cannot be good for Riley's brain, but it is just her subconscious. She's dreaming. Who's the birthday girl? Ah! <gasps> 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 <laughs> 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 we made it. <laughs> 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 
Man, sadness has been holding it down. So, how are we going to get to Minnesota from here? We're taking the bus, Nitwit! There's a bus leaving tomorrow. No, this is terrible. Where would you stay, Riley? You're not thinking this through. Well, we were promised delivery on the 5th. Uh-huh. Honesty Island? Yikes. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. Emotions, at least, were salvaged. We have no core memories. You want Riley to be happy? Let's get back to Minnesota and make more work. If we hurry, we can still stop her. Family Island, let's go. Aw, uh -huh. you know what the sad part is? I, Riley just needs a a moment to be vulnerable, you know? Just to take an opportunity to be sad and express that. Have a great day, sweetheart. See you after school, monkey. <laughs> we love you. Aw, a fascinating illustration of the mind. If you get in here, these core memories will get sad. I'm sorry. Riley needs to be happy. Joy? Oh, that is messed up. Oh, what a bunch of bullshit, Joy. This music's freaking effective, damn. It's that phrase I would hear for years of like, if you keep chanting, chanting to the garden, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds. The weeds will overtake the garden. I've changed a bit now. Can you move? It is very possible to block your emotions by trying to like just do positive affirmations and shit. But can't build the house on the sand, it'll sink. Eventually. Do you remember how she used to stick her tongue out when she was coloring? <laughs> it's interesting. Joy's experiencing the sadness. <laughs> interesting. It's like coming to terms with reality. Marley missed the winning shot. She felt awful. She wanted to quit. Oh, there was a joyful memory there. <laughs> that's that's really well done. <laughs> I came to help because of sadness. We have to get back up there. Joy can't exist without sadness, man. <laughs> Don't give up. Persistence. Persistence, come on. Nice. <laughs> Woo! Bing bong! We did it! <laughs> that, was, uh, that was great. That's what her imaginary friend would do. He's. <laughs> no! Don't save Riley! <laughs> Take her to the moon for me. I'll try. Bing bong. So, like, it totally plays with, like, whatever fucking childhood feelings you have, you know? Sadness? Come on, Sadness, where are you? 
Okay, if I were Sadness, where would I be? Uh, oh, everything is awful. <laughs> and you have to drag me around while I touch all the... Shut off. I would die for Ryan. 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 Wow. Wow. It's Joy. Stand back. And sadness. That worked. Well, what would you do if you're so smart? I tell you, but you're too dumb to understand. Oh my god. <laughs> it's up to you. Me? Sadness. Sadness. Riley needs you. That's really sweet. What a fascinating lesson. Wait, stop. How would you know how to get back? Riley. Oh, goodness. we were worried sick. Where have you been? It's so late. Uh. Hockey team, I want to go home. Please don't be mad. Oh. I miss Minnesota too. I miss the woods and we took hikes. Come here. <laughs> Please don't be mad. <laughs> He did the sadness. <laughs> that is, is beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Everything's restored. God, the snot just won't stop. Be wash the shirt. <laughs> I'm not missing one. Go, fuck, go, Lord. Riley. Oh, okay, okay, oh, hey, I gotta go. Riley. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She loved the face painting. I told you it was a great idea. Best idea he's had in a while. He's a really good guy. <sighs> <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> We've been through a lot lately, that's for sure. But we still love our girl. She has great new friends, a great new house. Things couldn't be better. After all, Riley's 12 now. What could happen? <laughs> that was wonderful. That was absolutely wonderful. Let's see what's in these credits since the images are moving. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Yay. What? It's all very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very true. I love that. Let's talk about it. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, just gotta get a good stretch in here. Yeah, that was very moving. That was very, very touching. I love the hell out of it, guys. That was an amazing film. Um, it's one of those movies where, like, the messages and themes are the centerpiece of the film, and they are, like, just driving the entire narrative forward, you know? And it's crazy that they can make something that feels high stakes out of something that is not... It's like, because what will make something feel high stakes in a film is why... Is, is, is how, how it can feel like life or death for the main character, pretty much. Like... You know, the, the circumstances themselves are not like that high stakes, but when you go to the recesses of the mind and you see the emotional turmoil and the challenges that Riley is going through, uh, that that makes it feel like high stakes. So it's, it's pretty crazy how they, they put this picture together. I just was watching it so fascinated by, by the whole construction because it has a really like nicely woven message. I th like with, with the most obvious one being that being, you know, sadness is okay, and that it's okay to feel sad. I, I just repeated it myself. <laughs> I just repeated that. But yeah, being sad is okay, and that there's something meaningful to it, and and that the main thing that you have to learn to to do in life is to be honest with yourself and w with your emotions, and that and that like really emotions. It's not really that emotions are good or bad, and, and I think you know in in depending on what part of the world you live in, um, but at least in the, the sections of the world I live in within Western societal culture, it often can be the case of, you know, that there's a much higher emphasis put on, you know, obviously positive thinking is great. There's a lot of power in positive thinking. There's a lot of power in, in you know, good thoughts and stuff. But that's like what, what I just said right there was the thing that I ought to not be saying is because we often have a habit of labeling our emotions as good or bad when emotions are just emotions and, and we ought to be more accepting of just how we feel and be okay with accepting how we feel because that's how we move on. That's how we move forward. You know, uh, that was one of my earliest lessons I ever, as someone who's been in therapy for like a, a decade at this point, one of the close to a decade, one of the earliest lessons I ever got because you know, I I was someone who who got very much into uh, personal development like a little over a decade ago, and, and who had a, a very much like toxic depressive mindset. Uh, at least that's how I associated. And yeah, I was I was just a very manic person, and uh, I was I was really really I felt like I was very personally volatile and angry all the time, and uh, just depressed like constantly for most of my life. And when I began to understand where they might come from, you know, in between that time of understanding what I would do with like personal development, I, you know, you would hear so much about positive thinking and, you know, I was, I was around for the time when something like the secret, the law of attraction was, was brought into the forefront and, and especially being, I know it exceeds far past Los Angeles, but being out in LA, that was so, such a dominant subject. And and, and and one thing that I think, and when you think about like law of attraction or or the power of like positive thinking, like you attract what you think about. It's not, it's not really like every emotion first comes from thought, sure. And I think the power of like attracting what you think about it's really you attract what you feel. And a lot of the times, you know, it, it, we, we there's 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 way. Like I I am one of those people who believes in the gr in the gray side of it all. Of like yeah, like there's. There's power in positive thinking. There's power in, in, in reminding yourself of what to really be grateful for. And a lot of the time, though, you know, some people, and I was exceptionally guilty of this, like life was not changing for me because I would just try to reject. I would just reject. It would be so hard to face the things that I felt personally traumatized by, by just trying to pile, like I got this like fucking toxicity and baggage and I was trying to pile positivity on top of there 
but that doesn't make for a good foundation. And I feel like that's what the message of this movie really is more about, more than just going, it's okay to be sad, which is a great message uh, to convey. Like, it's it's okay to cry. It's, it's okay to show your emotions. It's okay to show how you really feel. And a big part in, you know, moving past something it is first accepting how you feel. Like, it's it's one thing to be with your emotions of when you're sad. It's another thing to, you know, to get lost in it and to become and dwell in it so much to the point where, yeah, you are just in a, in a, in a void that that's the heart. That's the part where you don't want to get too down there, too down that rabbit hole, you know, like life is just a struggle for balance all the time. And that's just what I believe is that you, you don't want to go too far down that hole. Uh, but at the same time, there's that, that other side where it is okay to, feel how you feel and not re- reject it because that's the only way you move on. You know, grief has been such a prevalent topic in my life. And what a lot of people do often, uh, uh, I think, uh, hover between is the first and fifth stage of one, one, uh, one time, one of my, I've, I've had a couple of therapists in my life. And one, my first therapist, what she pointed out to me was, was that because in grief, there's like five stages, there's denial, uh, anger, and, and blame, depression, and denial, anger, blame, um, bargaining, and depression, and then the last one being acceptance. And it's not like, and, and, and what she pointed out to me was that the, those first four stages are all kind of intertwined, those first four of, they're all sort of like its own form of shock and denial, like those emotions that are coming through are all sort, sort of its own form. And then I think this movie represents that really well because you know, as a, as a child, like what, what this Riley character is dealing with of feeling hurt and not having a decision in the matter and feeling like she has to put on a happy face, you know, because dad's going through a hard time. This is tough for them. But yeah, I got to be all smiles. That's what they expect from me. And I. So as so anyway, like that's as, as she's dealing with like she's grieving over situation because that can be a traumatizing experience for someone where they are uprooting their whole foundation, their whole base, their whole life and having to start anew and, and you, you, they got to mourn the the life they're leaving behind. So, it, so I think that, you know, when you're thinking about that in association with grief, because that's what she is doing is, is grieving. She's experiencing those emotions, <laughs> you know, <laughs> from, from those stages of grief. And then the the part that you have to get to is acceptance, right? Is acceptance doesn't mean I'm over it necessarily. Like this acceptance just means I, I, yeah, I can deal with the reality of it now and I can, I can move forward. But the thing about getting to acceptance is you have to first feel all your emotions and be honest with yourself. Like whenever I'm around anyone with loss, I always say like the most important thing you can do right now is, be honest with yourself. Even if it's like, I don't want to feel right now or I, I just really can't deal with this, be honest with yourself when you can't do that. So that's what I loved about it was this in, 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 a, in a day and age where it's like, I don't feel like we're, there's so much emphasis, like if you go on social media about a, one niche area of, of of positive thinking, which is not a bad thing at all. Obviously, it's positive, a, a positive thinking where this is more of an encouragement to be honest with yourself. And a lot of the time when you do that, that can naturally pave the way for you to feel a more sincere, genuine way of feeling happiness, that these emotions can coexist, that they don't have to necessarily cancel out one, one another and they can help support each other and it's what makes us human um there's a book i read it's actually not a religious book despite what the title might make you think i'm not like i'm certainly not a religious person this book is called conversations with god and one of the things that book really uh, emphasized on is life is about experience and you can't really have one emotion without the other like in order to truly understand one emotion you have to experience the other so that's why, like early on in the movie, I was like, "Joy, you can't exist. Joy cannot really exist without really understanding what sadness is like, because that's what really helps us to understand joy is when we completely understand the opposite. And it's like that with with the wide variety of emotions. 
you know? So I think with what this movie did and talking so much thematically, I'm like, this, the movie's thematically on display the whole time. And, and that's why I loved it because it was the, that was the narrative <laughs> of the, of the film. Like when everything is collapsing and then when you, she like shut, when Riley shuts herself off, when it becomes too, too painful to deal with it, that she's just left in the stages of fear and anger and, and uh, like disgust, just these three emotions and this is all because like to deal with joy, like can't feel joy and dealing with sadness is too hard. So they're just pushed down to the recesses of her mind. And this is all that she has to work with on the forefront. If there was something that felt very real and, and truthful in that depiction, uh, I thought it was, it was great because like the characters, the emotions are written so well. Like you, you, I felt like I kind of craved a little bit more out of the, the disgust character. I think that's the one Mindy Colling was playing. I, I kind of craved a little bit more out of her in terms of just the writing because, yeah, she was like the least standout of the personalities to me. What, and I think that might, that might have something to do with the fact that, you know, the other emotions are more easy, easier to, to pinpoint where disgust seems like there's a specific, like, oh, this is disgusting. The other emotions can present a little bit more of a range, like fear can represent, you know, I've once heard that every emotion comes down to love or fear. And if you take any emotion, they're kind of belong to one of those categories. But if you're going to break it down within the rules of this movie of the mind, you know, like fear was able to show you the anxiety parts of it all and and those kind of emotions. And uh, anger would have some of those bargaining stages, <laughs> you know, the blame stages I, I thought were great. And uh, yeah, sadness and joy, learning from one another. I guess those are like the two primal emotions for for depicting this. And I think the, the voice acting work by Phyllis Smith from The Office, amazing work. So it's brought such sweetness to the role. Joy, Amy Poehler, what I loved was bringing the right ounce of what I thought was great about her voiceover work, and obviously this is in the writing, is that she, it is kind of that thing I was talking about where you try to push down like negative thinking with positive thoughts instead of just kind of admitting to yourself, like I'm I'm actually dealing with something kind of hard right now <laughs> instead of just admitting that to yourself. Like that would shine through in her performance of using optimism to push it away. That was excellent the stuff with that bing bong imaginary friend, you know, like that was heartbreaking to me of, of, of like, cause the imaginary friend scenario, you know, like to me, I felt like growing up my, my, my having an imagination was, was such in that fantasy and escapism was such a big part of my, my survival is how I would put it. And it's stayed with me my entire life. And, you know, you always hear the cliches of like, when you grow up, you kind of start rejecting that side of yourself. You, you stop being as playful, be an adult. And I feel like we're all, we're all really just, well, all of us adults are, are really just, we're still our kids, our childhood selves, just in a, in a bigger form, <laughs> you know, as we hear form from that, like they call it the core memories here. And, and funny to hear that because that's the word i would uh, use in my life is, is core memories understanding core memories and core memories so often help uh, define us and what we ultimately develop into over time and i loved i i loved the the uh, the aspect of the imagination is the thing that helped find the the creative way like joy had to get creative to to pierce through the again and, and then Get, get to sadness and to get to the headquarters and it was that imagination that helped save like because really this is all riley's mind and and the imagination of that character is the one who helped save the day it was the imagination side so i thought that was really i really connected with that and it, it was sad to see like bing bong go away because it was interesting with bing bong because he's a, the kind of character where he was amusing but I was like, I could, he might be a little bit annoying, but then he wasn't. I, thought, I was worried he'd be, get on my nerves, but he did it. And then I felt I was really affected by that moment when when he ultimately did fade away to help Joy get the chance to get to headquarters to take care of Riley. Imagination helps saving, and and I think a lot of in a lot of ways it, it can. It's not not like using fantasy to become delusional towards your reality. But there's the other side of it. Again, it's it's a gray area. And I think what this movie does is really help teach 
and, and illustrate to embrace the gray area, the collective is the community of your emotions versus just one way or the other. And I think that's a powerful thing to, to say to adults and to kids and pretty much everyone of all ages. That's usually what makes for the best Pixar movies, right? The ones that are for all ages. And, uh, yeah, I, th- I thought it was great. Like the, the way they dealt with dreams and the reality distortion of it. And like, yeah, that's, that's what dreams feel like, reality distortion. And, you know, I, th- I think dealing with the the idea that, you know, uh, to keep up happy appearances and when, when you're not, maybe don't actually feel happy. And, and to be okay with letting, you know, you don't feel like you have to let everyone know, but you can, you can, let some people and on the ones who are most important to you, the ones that you value. If you're one of those people that doesn't give a shit once let everyone, I'm sure go for it. Uh, but I, I think that's another great thing to instill. You know, I live out in LA too. We're you know, it's all all over the world, but it's, I really feel like in LA, yeah, it's it's really hard for uh, like uh, constant keeping up of appearances out here. It can feel like a facade after a while, a charade. So yeah, and I'm going off the dome here as I always do, but rather than picking apart the plot points, I, I feel like what I'm talking about, that is the plot points. And that's what I think makes for a fascinating discussion about an animated movie is these are the, <laughs> this is the plot of the movie. <laughs> so, and you're just watching it play out in a, in a way that's digestible for, for families, for children in a way that can just, that they can be cute and fun and a great learning lesson. But I think it's also one of those movies I, I can imagine watching this, watching as a little kid, and then watching it like 10 years later and learning more. Like if I saw this at five, then learn, understanding it better at 15. And then, wow, at 25, I could understand it even way better. And 35, like the older you get, the, the more you might be able to actually understand this. So as much as I was like, oh, I feel that, like, I don't think me in 2015 would have even understood this movie at, that well, honestly. Uh, I, I might have been like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> but, or like, yeah, I really appreciate it. But, uh, who I am at, at, at twenty fifth in, in, in two thousand fifteen was is not who I am today, uh, in any way. Like I, I really feel like I'm a very completely different person from then. So it's it's just gnarly to to see what they what they put together here. And I'm curious what they do with the sequel because I feel like there are really you'd have to probably expand the emotions out, expand the characters out. But uh, there is a lot you can do with a sequel that I'd be very much interested in. See, you can go pretty mature too if you really wanted to. Like, oh, big inside out, it's got all PG thirteen or R eight here. <laughs> they wouldn't do that. There's a version where obviously you could do that. So, I think that'd be crazy. And the movie was funny. It was also like a really funny movie. It, it was. It found a lot of a lot of great moments of of poignant humor as well. And you know, it is the kind of thing where I feel like I just get more from on, on a rewatch, and and because it is a it's a construct of the mind. You know, even dealing with like long term memories, and then if you don't nourish those memories, they can often fade away. I, I thought that was, I thought that was great. I thought it was a really great film with a, with a really f- powerful narrative, uh, as well. So yeah, yeah, I, I, I loved it. Um, I wasn't expecting to talk about it like this, but <laughs> here we are because that's what the movie is. At least my take. But guys, uh, what do you think about it? I thought the voice acting was great. I think the music by Michael Giacchino should have predicted it was him amazing great direction overall and uh awesome voiceover work it was deep <laughs> shit and deep in a way that kept it lighthearted for the for the most part you know like it, it was really on a good tone really strong tone might be one of my favorite pixar movies all righty well i'm done for the day thank you for being here subscribe click that bell leave a like check us out on patreon 